All right, we got the mill built, tested, brought over here. Just cut a few of the first logs up to get things kind of settled out. And it seems to be working perfectly. Got some ramps built. Got some pieces over there that are going to go as the motor supports that the feet will bolt to, kind of stiffen it up a little bit so it's easier to level. Um, I'll take you through a little walkthrough. It's a good system. It's a good system. And uh, I think it has a lot of great applications for people who want something that's a little more portable and where they're putting a little less wood through it than a band mill. we're going to use to pull the logs up onto the mill. I mean you could use PVs, right? A million different ways you can do it, but this is set up so that you can just plunk this in, wrap a rope around the log, and pull it onto the mill. set up the best for doing videos today but we'll work what we got. It's just a cedar. This one's not heavy, but uh, I'm still in first gear. And I can always go into the slow gear, which now is completely effortless. But and that's it. And for lighter logs, for lighter logs like that, really, you could probably just hand push them up or use a PV. But it's nice to have the options if you're getting into the bigger stuff that uh, you know you don't have to fight at all. inches and a 10 inch wide cut and you know that old Chinese 660 
doesn't seem to complain too much. Here you can see the entire mill being transported in a 16-foot runabout and uh, transported with a trailer and a 300cc two-wheel drive quad in its entirety with no problems at all. So these aren't necessarily the best systems, but they're easy enough. First run out. Okay. That's all there is to resetting your clamps. Like I say, a cam lock of some sorts, or we'll uh, we'll find something better, but can't complain right now. Anyhow, I'm just gonna reset the log to its next cut height and we'll do another cut. Okay, here now we're at the tending side, I guess you'd call it, of the mill. And uh, you wanna bring the log up. Just go back and forth until you're at the right height. Center the, you can center the, the heart of the wood on both sides so you cut tapers but at the end of the day your lumber will be true to the center line if that's what you want. And if you want to lower the log, you're going to take the weight off the rack, get rid of the ratcheting poles and you can lower it down. So, super easy to do the adjustments, right? Super easy. Let's take a look. Looks like the uh, nose oiler is doing its thing. And the finish, you know, it's not uh, it's not like a plain finish, but I've seen way worse coming out of band mills. You know, especially if the band is dull or whatever. And as far as it being true, that's uh, good enough for me. So, I don't know what else I can tell you about it, other than it's a nice height to work at, it's really adjustable, it's super easy, the chainsaw is super low maintenance, or you just take it home or have a spare, and spare chains, and you can sharpen them yourself. It's no work. You can pull this thing through wood like there's no tomorrow. And this chain is not sharp. It's the one I've been using all day. So, yeah. Let's, uh, let's flip it around and do another cut. It's the system. 
that pulls it forward. Lots, most of these ideas were stolen off the Logosol. This allows you to really feel what you're doing and if you get into a knot or a thick spot and it starts to bog the saw down, you just slow it down so you can really keep the speed of the saw very, very consistent without over revving it. I do have a bar oiler that runs to the tip and uh, you know helps out with that and pretty much run whatever in there. I went with a bar clamping system so that any saw will fit it and the support that goes out to the tip of the bar um, is necessary when you're running a bar this big. 36 inch bar has quite a bit of droop in it and uh, that really helps rectify that and this way the saw with undoing a few clamping bolts can uh, can come out and be used as a regular saw. This is a ripping chain. This is the Holtz Forma knockoff still 660. And so far I've been happy with it. I mean, I wouldn't have it as a falling saw in the bush. That's the only hole we had to drill and, uh, and put in there to uh, support it. And that way it doesn't actually pinch the uh, sprocket. So that solves that problem. And the uh, pulling line just runs up the guide rail and just pins in at the end. So it takes like one second to undo it. Here we have a bunch of different styles of fence and log grabs. And I kind of change them around. I don't think I've really figured out the best system yet. But uh, this is working. It's nice that you can move the wood without, it can have a Y or a, a, a split in it. You can change things around. You can put weird shaped woods in here and uh, it seems to take it just fine. This is an old rack, which uh, this is where the leftover metals out of the garbage bin got repurposed. And there is the lifting mechanism. And it's got quarter inch per click. So once you start milling, you can uh, just count the clicks. And they're loud. They're audible enough that you're not going to miss them. And it really helps set the wood to the center line. So you're keeping the heart centered in the piece of wood that you're cutting with the heartwood in it. Getting rid of all the taper. These are the adjustments. So the big shaft there runs the rack. This lower one engages and disengages the ratchets. So if you want to lower it, you click it to the next down, but you got to take the weight off first. And uh, let's do a bit of milling. There's some timbers up there that we cut and put copper naphthenate on. And a couple more logs will mill up. So once you start cutting dimensional wood, you can uh, just go five clicks up and five clicks up and it'll stay parallel and you can cut your boards off. Uh, a little bit more playing around when you're cutting your first two cuts, trying to get it you know, true but uh, overall it's easy. To get the saw to come back easily, you just, uh, there's a little bit of play. You can just clear the wood and you just pull it back. That's it. probably the hardest thing. Probably the hardest thing to do is to uh, remember to turn your nose bar oiler on and off. It does cut beautifully. It also makes a substantial mess. I don't know what there is. Better part of six inches of sawdust down there. Beams look great. And now it's time to deal with the waste wood. 
The milling is the least amount of work in the cutting of lumber. All right, that's the end of the day of milling. That's five logs. Uh, can't complain about the cut, the bar, the chain, the saw, the mill. Everything's pretty much working out. A few little things, loose bolts, a little bit of Loctite will fix that up. I uh, got no complaints. 36 inch bar, when the chain gets warm it does stretch, but if you leave it uh, between cuts to cool down and don't readjust, it's, uh, it shrinks back down once it cools down a little bit, so something to think about. Um, yeah, too easy. Alright, there's a 7.5 by 9.5 beam. That's an 11 inch by 11 inch beam. Got the uh, the ramps just pinned in loose, so they don't wobble around anymore. This is the last of the five logs. So this is the same chain, unsharpened. It has cut. Uh, I don't know how much better you'll ever get that. Here's the finish. This is also uh, just a round nose chisel chain. But I have cut well, this log into those ramps. Those logs into those cants. And another log into uh, the actual footings for the sawmill, which will put under when I get ambitious and uh, well we burnt a lot of the slat wood but there's still slat wood and we haven't had to sharpen the chain yet although it's not as sharp as it was originally it uh, is still cut and fine we'll finish off this cant and that's pretty good for one chain I would think the only little things we've been having issues with is the uh, like always, things vibrating loose on the oiler, just with chainsaw vibrations. It's going to have to meet up with some Loctite. But so far, that's six tanks of gas all together through the Chinese Holtzforma 660. And it's running like a champ. The only thing is if you choke it, and pull start it, as soon as it gives one kick, you better turn the choke off or she does like to flood. But other than that, it is running flawless. Well, let's take a little look around here before we shut her down. There's the uh, rack and the ratcheting system. And what's best about this mill? is you can sit on it and enjoy it like a big bar you and your friends you can adjust the height of your seat and uh, kick back and enjoy the view <laughs>